Welcome to the Garmin Avionics GPS Navigators User Interface and Setup video. This video was created by the Garmin Aviation Training Team to assist you in becoming more familiar with the operation and functions available with the GPS Navigators. If you have not already done so, we invite you to first view the first video in the series where we discussed an overview of the GPS Navigators, explained some of the limitations with the Navigators, then we considered the installation planning and install requirements. In this video, we will walk through the basic user interfaces and page functions of the Navigators, along with demonstrating examples of setting up some of the common Garmin and third-party interfaces. Remember the information in this video never replaces or supersedes information and procedures in the applicable installation manuals. We'll begin by going over some of the basic user interfaces with the Navigators. The Navigators display layout contains two major components, which include the touchscreen and bezel. The touchscreen is a full color display, which provides the main controls for unit operation. Touchscreen controls are fairly intuitive to most smartphones and tablets in common use. The bezel contains the following components. The power home key, which powers the unit on or off and provides access to the home page. Dual concentric knobs allow data entry, list scrolling, map range control, and page navigation. The knobs are a secondary method for unit control. A photo cell which measures ambient light to automatically adjust display brightness for different lighting conditions. An SD card slot is the interface for loading databases, exporting log files, and updating software, compatible with the optional FlightStream 510. Lastly, the locking mechanism contains a hex drive captive fastener for unit installation and removal. The first step in the setup process is to enter the unit into configuration mode, which can be accessed by holding down the knob located at the bottom right of the unit while simultaneously powering on the unit. When the configuration home page is displayed, release the knob. The configuration home page contains various icons that are used for system configuration and calibration. Depending on your interfacing options, not all icons may be applicable to your installation. The updates page is used when system software is updated. This page usually appears after a software loader card is inserted into the SD card slot and power is applied to the navigator. The System Information page displays general and board-specific information on the Navigator. The Setup page is used to access the different subpages in order to set up the Navigator for a specific installation. The Diagnostics page is used to verify that each LRU and interface to the Navigator is communicating and has been properly configured. The SD Save and SD Load pages are used to save or load a configuration file to the Navigator. Now that we have a better understanding of the operation and different page functions available on the Navigator, we will now demonstrate a few examples of the setup process with some common Garmin and third-party interfaces. We'll use the GPS-175 Navigator for our demonstration. Due to the different interface options with each of the navigators, not all examples may be applicable to every installation. As always, refer to the proper installation manual for the appropriate navigator and interfacing equipment. The first example we'll walk through is setting up a Garmin TXI GDU 1060 EFIS display using the table provided in the installation manual. From the Configuration Mode homepage, select the Setup button. Next, select Interfaces. On the Interfaced Equipment page, you'll notice the GDU button defaults to Not Present. Select the GDU button and it will now be displayed as present. After, follow the procedures outlined in the TXI Install Manual to configure the TXI system for the installed navigator. The next example we'll go over is setting up a Garmin G5 EHSI interface. Once again, from the Configuration Mode homepage, select the Setup button. Next, select Interfaces. 
Now select the Airing 429 button. From the Airing 429 Interfaced Equipment page, select the proper port as described in the table and interconnect diagram. In the Airing Receive Port 1 box, select the Format button and choose GDU Format 1 and set the port speed to low. In the Airing Transmit Port 1 box, select the Format button and choose the Gamma Format 1. Then make sure the port speed is also set to low. Use the Back button to go back to the Interface Equipment page. This time, select the RS-232 button. Select Port 1 and choose the MapMX option. Finally, follow the procedures outlined in the G5 Install Manual to configure the G5 system for the installed navigator. Now we'll demonstrate a few examples on some common third-party interfaces. Once again, we'll be using the GPS-175 as our example. The first third-party interface we'll set up is an Aspen EFD-1000 or 500 EFIS display. From the Configuration Mode homepage, select the Setup button. Then select Interfaces. Now select the Airing 429 button. From the Airing 429 Interfaced Equipment page, select the proper port as described in the Table and Interconnect diagram. In the Airing 429 Receive Port 1 box, select the Format button and choose the EFIS ADC option and set the port speed to low. In the Airing Transmit Port 1 box, select the Format button and choose the Gamma Format 3 option. Then make sure the port speed is set to low. Finally, follow the procedures outlined in the applicable Aspen EFD 1000 or 500 install manual to configure the Aspen EFD system for the applicable navigator. The next third-party example we'll set up is a Honeywell Bendix King KI-209A Analog Composite Navigation Indicator. Once again, from the Configuration Mode homepage, select the Setup button. This time, we'll select the Main System button. The Main System menu has two subpages as noted by the indicator at the bottom of the menu. Swipe the page to the left to access the secondary subpage. Select the Composite CDI button, which will change from Disabled to Enabled. Now that you have a better understanding and are more familiar with the operations and functions of the Garmin GPS navigators, we hope you'll enjoy accomplishing further maintenance procedures with the enhancement and flexibility of the Garmin GPS navigators.